What's going on friends? It is Slash687 here back at it again with another PC related video. Today what I have is a $700 PC build. $700 is the price to performance sweet spot pretty much the FPS per dollar max capacity and overall for $700 you really can't get a better PC than this. Starting off with the CPU, we have the Intel Core i5-6400, it's a 2.7 GHz quad core Intel Skylake CPU. These things are very power efficient, very good as far as thermals are concerned, they keep very cool and they're very good for the money right now and for only $180 this thing is very good it can overclock a lot of people don't believe that you can overclock these Skylake series uh, CPUs anymore because Intel did release a microcode update but there are numerous ways to bypass this you can go on to random websites and download the original uh, software that allowed you to overclock these CPUs and it's very possible if you just google it you can find out how and you can still overclock w one of these Skylake CPUs that are not the K version despite what people want you to believe. Next up for the motherboard, I wanted to get a full sized ATX motherboard but I could not fit it into the build. We have the Gigabyte GA H11 OMA Micro ATX Socket 1151 motherboard. That's quite a mouthful, but this thing is a Micro ATX motherboard. It obviously supports DDR4 because that's what the Skylake uh, CPUs use, and it supports our Skylake CPU, which is a great thing, and it supports 32 gigabytes of DDR4. Now, for a, a motherboard this size, it really doesn't lack too many features. It's actually a pretty decent motherboard, even though I do usually like to go for the full-sized ATX motherboards in these builds because they all feature SLI support and that kind of jazz. But for the money, at only $55, you can't go wrong with this motherboard. For the memory, I have the G-Skill NT-Series 8GB kit. It's DDR4 clocked at 2133 megahertz, and it comes in two 4 gigabyte sticks. You all know the drill, it does what RAM needs to do. I pretty much just pick the cheapest 8 gigabyte kit every time I'm doing one of these videos. Uh, I mean, unless you're buying from some really crazy Chinese or, you know, pretty much just some low quality RAM you've never heard of, RAM is always going to hold up. Just buy some, it doesn't matter what brand it is most of the time, unless like I said it's some crazy brand that has a terrible reputation. Just buy RAM, buy cheap RAM, and you'll be fine. For the storage we have the Seagate Barracuda 1TB 7200 RPM hard drive. Same thing goes for this hard drive as goes with the RAM, I picked the cheapest 1TB hard drive I could find, and just so happened today that it was the Seagate Barracuda 1TB hard drive. This is actually a very good, very well-reviewed hard drive, as opposed to some of the other ones I sometimes pick. You can't go wrong with Seagate Barracuda, these things run forever, and for only $47 right now, 1TB, you can't really go wrong, but I would recommend upgrading to a 2 or 3TB hard drive down the line, as games are just getting so much bigger. For the video card, I have the EVGA GeForce GTX 970 4GB superclocked ACX cooler video card. This thing features the ACX 2.0 cooler, which is a very, very good, very much improved cooler. Keeps this thing very cool, and not to mention the Maxwell architecture that this chip is based on is very power efficient and is naturally going to be very cool and good as far as thermals are concerned. A GTX 970 is the optimal price to performance GPU. Now I know there's going to be somebody commenting, oh the R9 390 is better, or whatever, but when it comes down to it, whichever of the two GPUs, whether it's the R9 390 or the GTX 970, whichever one's cheaper, pretty much just go with that one because they're so close when it comes down to it. Uh, just look for the good deal, don't really be swayed by what brand the card is. For the case, I have the Corsair 100R ATX Mid-Tower case. This thing is $38, it's a mid-tower and it is um, a little bit old. It's it's the series before the 200R, you know, it's still a good case, still looks very nice, holds all our parts, and does support this micro ATX motherboard which we're using, so very good option as far as the case is concerned. Lastly, for the power supply, I have the Thermaltake TR2 600W ATX power supply. It's very cheap right now, only $30 for a 600 watt power supply. Has pretty good reviews, I think it's 4.5 stars, and for the money, you're getting 600 watts, so you can't complain. 
that's gonna complete the build guys I hope you enjoyed be sure to leave a like rating like I'm serious man if you like this video I'm your best friend that's right your very best friend you can call me up I will console you if your girlfriend breaks up with you I will talk you through all life's mysteries and I will be by your side when you need me so be sure to click that like button be sure to subscribe if you're new and I'll see you guys later peace